Great to be with you this afternoon. I hope you're ready for a great afternoon. A lot of uh, interesting things, anxious to share with you. And uh, I'm going to specifically talk to you a little bit about search and creating compelling and converting search marketing. Um, our company, Perspective Marketing, uh, works with dental practices. And one of the unique things that we have done is to track what happens with those leads clear through the conversion process. So we've learned a lot in the last 14 years about things that are working and it's constantly changing. And I wanna share with you a few tips today with regards to things that are working and make a difference. When you're looking at search marketing, of course, there are a lot of facets to that. You've got your website, you've got SEO, you've got pay-per-click advertising, you've got to worry about local listings, you've got to worry about reviews. Uh, all of those are gonna have an impact plus other things that are impacting search. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about how to use those tools that you have uh, to help you be found. And, and one of the important things to think about with regards to search marketing is that it's different than mass marketing. If we're doing mass marketing like television, radio, to some extent direct mail, we're, the dentist is going out and, and advertising and hopefully there are some prospects in the path of that that are gonna get found. With search marketing, we take that equation and turn it 180 degrees and the prospect is looking for the services that you have to offer or to solve problems that they have. And our job is to be in, the, in their path when they search. So here are four things that I uh, are gonna be kind of woven through the things I'm gonna share with you this afternoon. First of all, it's very, very important to be in their path and be there for the things that they might be searching for and at the time when they're searching. Secondly, important to be compelling and have things that are gonna help interest them and excite them to, to and motivate them to contact you. Third thing is to make sure that you're consistent. And Jack talked about this a little bit this morning about the consistency in your branding, the consistency in your message. And that's critically important in search marketing as well. Whoops. And then finally, make it easy for them to contact you and to convert. So we'll talk about those four things woven through the things that I'm gonna share with you here. First of all, let's start with the website. It is your tool. In a, in a lot of ways, it's kind of your front office for someone who doesn't know about your practice and it gives them an opportunity to learn about your practice and, and uh, find out some things about you. I'm just gonna share with you a few website tips. Um, my colleague tomorrow is gonna talk about some of these things in a little more depth. But first of all, make sure that you're focusing on benefits. I know you talked about a little bit about the importance of that in your messaging. Um, when I was in high school, I worked at McDonald's and it was an interesting experience to work behind the counter and find out a little bit about their culture. But one of the things they do in their advertising, which you're probably very familiar with, is they, in effect, sell the sizzle. In other words, they're selling appetite appeal and they'll show the burger hitting the hot grill, sizzling on the grill and the cheese melting over the end. And, then you've got this burger you're ready to bite into. And that's essentially what we need to be able to do in dental advertising as well, is to sell that end result, to sell, help them to visualize, as Brian was talking to us about this morning, helping them to be able to visualize what that end result can be for them is very, very powerful. Share the story, not only your story as a dental practice, but story of your patients and help them to understand what difference that has made in their lives. Make the navigation easy. Don't make them work to find content on your website. Make it easy to have an easy drop down menu so they can quickly locate the things that they're looking for. And finally, add content to that website regularly. One of the real critical things on a website, um, Zania mentioned earlier today, uh, is in a lot of website design, the tendency is to kind of push those action paths away so that they're um, not as visible and we have this nice clean content. But that is your lifeline. That's how they're gonna reach you. So you consider those action paths, the phone, uh, good idea to have texting or chat capability, 
a lead form that they can just simply contact you that comes to you via email. And uh, a lot of doctors are now starting to use online scheduling so that when you're not in the office, that can be used and very convenient. But make those really easy to find. Put priority on that phone number. Make sure it's on the top of that web page, easy to find on any page that they might be on on your website, because those we have found convert um, at the highest rate. They're in the moment, they can do it right then, they can set an appointment and you're ready to go. Um, and then include a call to action. That's something very simple you can do instead of just putting the phone number up there. Make sure there's a call to action. Call us today, call us now. You'd be surprised how much difference that simple little thing can make in your conversion rate. Um, one of the interesting trends that has occurred over the last five years has been this massive shift to mobile and adapting your search marketing to mobile is critically important. Um, we've tracked over the last four years since the five years since the beginning of 2014 the growth in mobile search in other words people who are searching for dentistry on a smartphone and back in 2014 at the beginning of the year that amount of search was at about 22 percent of all the searches that were done, about 68% of it was being done on desktop. Um, you can see that that has, if you follow that red line, that that grew at a pretty healthy pace over the next four years to the point where at the beginning of 2018, we were at about 55% or more than half of those searches that are being done for dentistry. And this is actually tracking our dental clients. Um, and it has, in, in a sense, kind of leveled out a little bit over the last year and a half. But when you think about somebody's on the phone, chances are more than half of the time that's going to be somebody that searched for you on a mobile phone. So what do we do to adapt to that? Some important ramifications of it. First of all, with your website, um, making sure that we've adapted the conversion paths that someone on a cell phone might more readily use. Make sure your number on, that, on your website is clickable, so they can just click that and it automatically calls you. Um, texting capability or chat capability, much more important on a cell phone, uh, giving them the capability to text you and be able to respond. Um, load time on a website is critically important. Google has now made that a, a search factor in the algorithm as to how you rank. It's a, less importance, but it's going to continue to grow in importance. So making sure that your website is optimized so that it'll load quickly is critically important. With your pay-per-click advertising, make sure that you've uh, uh, included keywords like just simple near me keywords. Dentist near me, cosmetic dentist near me. You'd be surprised how much of that has now become pretty common in searches, and if you've got that incorporated into your advertising, you'll more readily be found. And finally, with search engine optimization, think about questions that your patients might have that you could readily answer. You think about voice search, which is on a similar trajectory as mobile has been in terms of its growth, and we tend to ask more questions when we're using voice search. Where can I find a dentist near me? And what does it cost to have dental implants done? So if you answer some of those questions on your website, you'll be more readily likely to come up. It has another benefit, though, just in terms of search. You know those little question answer boxes that show up the, at the top of the search results a lot of time? Those are simply pulling from websites that answer questions. So if you incorporate some of that into your website, you might be more likely to get picked up uh, in those answer boxes, and that gives you some additional traction with SEO. Another important thing to consider is, is the synergy of all these efforts that you're making with search marketing. And when you think about your visibility on a, on a web page, um, there are three key sections on that search page in Google, for example. The ads are at the top. If it triggers a local search, you'll see a map and three other listings, and then you have your organic listings down below that. Now, research has shown that if you have a listing 
in the ads as well as in the organic search that you're likely to get more click through than the sum of those parts, more than you would get with just organic search, more than you would get with just paid search. And a recent study, and then you've got other opportunities to show up like your local listings and even optimizing YouTube videos so that they'll show up in those search results. And uh, a, a study that was done by Google in 2012 showed that even if you rank number one in organic search, uh, by running ads, they picked up 50% incremental um, traffic. We had an interesting circumstance happen with one of our doctors that had to cut out all of their paid advertising because of a bicycle accident. He wasn't able to work full schedule, so he toned back his advertising. We expected all of that paid traffic to drop out. What we didn't expect was that his organic traffic also dropped off. And what we realized was happening as people were seeing him in his paid ad, by the time they got down to the organic listings, they were saying, oh, here's somebody I ought to check out. They were seeing him a second time and were clicking on that organic listing that was listed down below. That paid traffic's become even more important as you think about a mobile um, search where all you see at the top are the paid ads and your local listings before you even get to the organic search. So there are other ways to use this synergy between all of these pieces. When you do paid advertising, you learn very quickly which services are converting best. You learn uh, quickly which geographies are doing well. Those are things that you can incorporate into other parts of your marketing. Take that information about key services and incorporate those into your local listings. Take that information about um, geography and use that to help you target your organic search. So then we get to ads. How do we write good, compelling, motivating ads? A um, Couple of thoughts here. First of all, make sure that you're very benefit oriented. Um, and then provide some reassurance as well. It's easy for us to get wrapped up in services and what we offer, and we need to switch our thinking and think about what is the end result that we can offer to a patient like uh, Brian was talking about this morning. Make sure there's some good calls to action. Those make a difference in moving people. And then comes the opportunity for search domination. It's interesting to look over the last few years at what has happened with Google. They have shrunk the amount of space that's being um, used for search by this shift to mobile. But at the same time, they've been expanding the palette that we have to work with uh, to list those ads. So a few years ago, we had one 25 character headline and two 35 character description lines. That expanded three years ago where they offered two headlines and a little bit longer description. This year they've now expanded this further where you can put a third headline in which they can show at their discretion and up to two descriptions, 90 character descriptions down in the bottom. Add to that the opportunity to add extensions. And these, this is additional information that you can add in addition to the ad. So these can be, um, and there are various ones, I won't go through all of these, but one of them, for example, is a location extension that just ties into your Google My Business listing. Lists your address, maybe your phone number, um, but terrific opportunity to get more visibility. Well, you look at this um, search screen, and this particular ad had two headlines, two descriptions, had three call-out extensions and four site link extensions that linked to deeper parts of the website. There's nothing else on the screen but this one doctor's listing right there on the, uh, the beginning of that search. So there's an opportunity if you use that correctly to dominate that screen when their search is being done. One other thing to consider is remarketing. Sometimes we have people, we have a vast number of people who come to our websites, right? And a number of them don't convert. So this gives us a second chance to go back and um, put some visibility in front of them um, one of the, by retargeting or remarketing. What that does if they come to our site and don't convert, we serve them up another 
ad when they're searching on the internet again. You've seen these many times, I'm sure, and you've been searching for products. But we can do that with the services that we offer. And most important to consider this for uh, services that are kind of high value or considered purchases, implants, cosmetic dentistry, maybe even sedation, where they might be thinking about considering that for quite some time, and they'd come back uh, as a reminder. We did a test of practices that had been using remarketing among our doctors and compared the year before they were doing that to the year after. And there was a lot of other marketing going on, but this was a part of that effort. Those doctors saw a 56% increase in their total leads, of which that was a part of that effort. The ones who had not been doing that and during that same similar kind of time period saw about a 4% increase. There's a lot of opportunity to build uh, that lead volume by getting back in front of them again and reminding them about what you have to offer. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about today is local listings. It is a great opportunity to make sure that you have presence in front of, of the people that are finding your practice. And <clears throat> these three in particular are important with regards to reviews, but there are a number of other local listings across the internet that it's important to pay attention to. And a couple of tips here to keep in mind. First of all, make sure you've got really good complete content. You've looked at your address and phone, that those are properly uh, listed, that you've got um, the categories, you've marked all of the categories that you appropriately uh, can list, and then that you've got good content, that you've gone through and written a good coherent description of your practice. In addition to that, pay attention to the photos. Uh, we've talked this, this morning about a lot, the importance of content and building more content and sharing that. It is critically important also with regards to your local listing. And um, you can now, you may be aware, can post not only photos, but 30 second videos on your Google My Business listing. There was a study that was done recently to look at the impact, potential impact of more photos on your local listing. In this study, they found that the practices that had, well, this was actually done across all local businesses, restaurants, hotels that might have tendency to have more content on them. But those with 100 or more photos saw a 520% more calls than, than average and 1,065% more clicks. In contrast, those that only had one photo saw 76 fewer calls, 65% fewer clicks. Now this is a correlation. It doesn't necessarily mean it was causing it, but it does suggest that adding more content to those your Google My Business listing will make a real difference. We looked at this in dentistry to look at our own practices that we work with. So we took 10 of our top practices that had the highest number of photos on their Google My Business listing. They averaged about 66. The bottom 10 dentists had about seven, but you can see that the actions and the, their measurement isn't perfect on Google, but you can see that directionally the, the number of actions for those that had more photos was nearly twice what those, from those that didn't have those on their listing. So um, you have a lot of opportunity here that's provided at this conference to create content. You can do this also in your practice, but getting that content not only on social media, but also sharing that on Google, in your Google My Business listing and other local listings can have a real impact in getting engagement. Um, there are a couple of other opportunities on your local listing. You may have noticed that there's a little uh, Q&A on your local listing. People can go on and just ask you a question, and it's great if you can respond to those and make sure that you're, they see then not only that you're responsive to people who are inquiring, but also a great opportunity for you to share some great information. There are also some posts down at the bottom where you can include a picture and an offer, and you can do multiples of these um, across, across your local listing, helps create some engagement. And then reviews, critically important. And we'll talk a lot about reviews in this conference, but just a couple of thoughts to share with you. They are important for reassurance that other people have your practice in high regard, and secondly, helps tremendously with conversion. 
And there was an uh, interesting study done last year, which has been repeated yearly by a company called Bright Local. They found that 78% of the people um, in this study said that they trusted a review online as much as a personal recommendation. Uh, some with some qualification, but generally that's where it went. What was interesting about the study last year is they asked that question by age group, and it was dramatically different. Um, those who were uh, 18 to 34, 91 percent of those people said they trusted it as much as a personal recommendation. It dropped to 80 percent for those in the 35 to 54 year old range, and down to 61 percent in those that were 55 and older. So consider that that's going to have a little different impact on your your overall um, acceptance as you as you generate reviews and on those different age groups. Um, Finally, consider that when they look at reviews, they're looking, most people look at star rating. Secondly, they look at the quantity of reviews. Third, they're gonna, most people look at the recency of those reviews. So that needs to be a regular part of your running of practices is generating those reviews. So um, one tip I'd just share with you with regards to reviews, we're going to talk a lot about asking for reviews later, but one thing you can do that will give you some help as you, is to respond to those reviews. And if you will include in that some simple reference to your location, for example, you could say, we know you have a lot of choices. We love your new smile too. Um, we, we know you have a lot of cho choices in the Provo area to, to, uh, for a cosmetic dentist. We are grateful that you came to us. That little tip will help you to show up better for your location because it's sending a signal to Google that that's where you are and what you do. Um, and a great opportunity to use those negative reviews to respond to those to talk about your guarantee, how you work, um, and kind of turn that around to share some really helpful information. So hope that's helpful. Here's, if you have any other questions, uh, I'll be here in the back uh, later today and tomorrow. Um, here's my contact information. If uh, you have any questions, be glad to respond to those. Thank you very much. Hope that's helpful to you.